welcome to Jimmy D's RC page. Thanks for stopping by. Um, so for a little while now, I've been wanting to do a bit of a rundown, uh, shakedown video on this Diamond Tiger Moth. It's pretty much my go-to bird at the moment while I'm having some teething troubles with my Great Plains Spitfire and my, uh, my Reptile. I burned out another motor today and uh, we can talk about why in a different video, but we figured out why they keep burning out. So hopefully that's flying by the end of the week. Um, and while I'm waiting for some larger airplanes to rock up. Um, so uh, this is the one I pretty much take to the field uh, every time I go flying, and boy, is it a lot of fun. Uh, I've got some in-flight footage I'm going to put up here, uh, as well as some FPV footage. And you can really uh, do quite a bit with this bird. As a sport plane, it's quite versatile. You can fly at scale if you want to fly at scale, or you can throw it around, around the sky a little bit. Uh, and it's good fun. But what I thought I would do is start off with talking about Dynam and the, the type of quality you can expect if you're going to go ahead and buy one of these aeroplanes. Um, have a look in the description if you want to skip all the, the babble and you want to go straight to the flying. I'll put a, uh, a time uh, stamp in the description down below as to where the flying starts. Um, but if you're interested in finding out about the aeroplane, let's have a good chat and let's start that right now. So you got the airplane, it comes, uh, mine I got uh, from uh, Banggood and I got it uh, off the Australian uh, warehouse. I think it was the last one in the Australian warehouse because I got it for a real deal, uh, less than $300. Um, and I checked the price about 10 minutes after I bought it and it had jumped to about 550, 560 bucks, whatever they're charging right now. So I suspect what happened is I got the last one in the Australian warehouse. Uh, it didn't take too long to get here, a couple of weeks, and I had ordered it for my birthday, which was the beginning of August, um, and it arrived uh, a couple of weeks before my birthday. And then uh, what I did is I waited and went ahead and on my birthday opened it up and uh, started building it. And I had it built within a day. Uh, the good thing about uh, having that much lead time that I had the kit sitting here is I, of course, was starting to do some research. And I went on to RC Groups and I found the first thing that everybody recommended if you're going to be doing grass ops on this airplane was to do an undercarriage modification whereby you move the undercarriage forward. I don't exactly remember uh, how far we were supposed to move it forward. I will again, I'll put a link in the description to that forum page um, and you can see what they've done. But basically, it was a matter of shortening up these these braces up the front. I shortened them probably by about uh, oh maybe two centimeters or so, drilled new holes, flattened them out, and then uh, bending the undercarriage where it where it meets the um, the airplane itself. That's actually getting a little loose. There should probably be some uh, braces in there to keep that from happening. So there's uh, some more feedback. Um, but there, there basically uh, the undercarriage goes straight into a plastic uh, channel. Um, and so I guess if you just give it a push every now and again, the gravity uh, will hopefully keep them from falling out. I don't know, we'll see what happens. I hope I never have to belly land this because it would be a real pity to do so. I'm really enjoying the model. As you can see, I've done some customization on the model. I've got uh, custom decals and custom paint because that just comes straight yellow. I put a custom pilot in there. That's a 1.6 pilot again available. I don't remember if I got that off of AliExpress or if I got that off of Banggood, but it's a 1.6 pilot and I've just cut his shoulders down so he'll fit in and gave him a bit of a nicer paint job than you uh, you get stock. Um, and I've uh, those custom decals, you can see I've got the registration of JAU, the airplane, uh, one of the airplanes I used to fly, Airborne Aviation. I've got some video on my page if you want to have a look on my channel. And uh, just a little bit of customization to make it look a bit more like that. I put a, a wooden prop on it um, because, of course, the Tiger Moss that I used to fly had wooden, so it made it look a little bit more scale. There are some other scale touches that I haven't gone into that I'm thinking of, but let's not talk about those until they're done. I did paint these. These, uh, these uh, struts come in yellow, so they're just basically yellow plastic, and I just painted them uh, like a cherry timber to match the airplane. And the flying wires that I got with the kit were too short. Um, there's no question about that. There are a whole bunch of forum uh, uh, topics on this where, you know, it's like guys say, oh no, it's not short, uh, not too short, you're just not pulling hard enough, etc., etc. I pulled this attachment point out of the airplane trying to get them to work. They were too short from the factory. There's no question. So uh, I went ahead and replaced that with um, uh, just a jeweler's wire. And uh, I think I've, I've done... Um, a video before on exactly what I use, but it's inside the toolbox right now, so I might turn it off. So. <coughs> Talk amongst yourselves. There it is. Just jewelers wire, jewelers wire. It's called Senfil. Uh, it's a uh, 0.4 millimeters, seven strand. Um, I think it's steel. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's just steel. 
Um, and if not, then it's something similar. It's, uh, I mean, it, it holds up every now and again. I've broken, uh, I've broken three flying wires um, of exceeding 5G. So uh, most of my flights now, I keep it high fours, 4.89 or something like that. G, and uh, they haven't broken again. This one I do notice is getting quite loose on the, the, um, on the starboard side. But uh, I've also ordered some new stuff that's a bit heavier, a bit heavier gauge. So we'll see how that goes when it finally arrives. I might replace those. But for the most part, it just keeps the wings a bit stiffer um, and uh, makes your maneuvers a bit more snappy. Um, the, uh, the servos that it comes with, it comes with a Y connector. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is change that to some extension so I can get more differential in the ailerons um, and make the rolls a bit more axial. But at the end of the day, it's a Tiger Moth and you're going to get what you get. I mean, it doesn't have any ailerons on the top wing, as you can see. They're just on the bottom and uh, pretty much it flies how it flies. But I was looking at that FPV footage, and when you, I, I was, I was inverted at one point, and I rolled back to straight and level, and it just, oh, it's just not a very axial roll at all. And it's not a big deal. You're not in the airplane, and uh, yeah, you're having a bit of fun out there. I'm trying to think of what other mods I did. Oh yes, yeah, so the um, the hinges, of course, are just foam hinges. So uh, this rudder came off in about three flights, uh, and so uh, I did need to replace those uh, those hinges, and I did re I replaced them with uh, one quarter scale. A pin hinge because I couldn't have, find any CA hinge in the country at the time. I have since ordered some from the US and it's arrived. So from now on, I'll, I'll be replacing any uh, other hinge breakages with CA hinges. And we know that they are going to break at some point. It's just a question of when. Um, and then, uh, other than that, just to get the C of G right, I pretty much have my C of G right on the uh, leading edge of the bottom wing. Um, so if you, you go a vertical line up from there, when I've got the batteries in it, that's where it balances quite nicely. Um, and to do that, I had to add 60 grams of weight to the inside of the cowl. So I basically added uh, 60 grams right around that air inlet that you see on uh, the right side of, yeah. So there's just basically glued, um, glued weights in there. Anyway, so there it is. I'm really enjoying this airplane at the moment. It's much more nimble than a standard trainer. Um, I'm running the uh, AR637T in it, so I do uh, tend to leave it on um, on AS3X mode when it's a windy day, and honestly, I can't really get to the field until the wind starts to pick up here anyway. Uh, I rarely have a calm flight with this thing, so I just usually keep it on AS3X, and when it starts to get quite hot and turbulent in the, uh, in the afternoons, I'll pop it onto stability mode, and I'm just using the, um, the gain rates that they recommend in the opening video on how to set your gains for those two modes, AS3X and stability. Um, when it is calm, every now and again I'll get a nice calm day and I'll, I'll flip it onto manual and it flies so nicely. Um, I really find it's a, a beautiful airframe. I mean, with your swept back wings the way it is, that's going to add some stability. The wings don't have much in the way of dihedral. The bottom wing has a little bit, but the top wing doesn't. Um, but it does uh, keep it directionally quite stable. Uh, the stability and roll is quite good as well. A huge tail surface. You can see the size of that rudder is massive, and the size of the elevator and the stabilizer is very large as well. The fin isn't that big, but the, the rudder does most of the work anyway. I have a look at that stabilizer in the elevator. Big, huge tail surfaces. Not a lot of keel surface. You can't knife edge this. Uh, I mean, I run it on um, a couple of different battery packs. I have. Um, uh, Zippy 2200 milliamp hour uh, 4S, and then I have um, uh, Turnigy Nanotech 3300 milliamp hour 6S, uh, or sorry, 4S pack as well. And uh, I find that, you know what, the, uh, the performance is much better uh, out of the, um, the Zippy Compact pack. Uh, but I get much longer flight times, of course, out of the 3300 pack. So uh, if, I, if I fly at scale, I can get an eight minute flight out of it on the 3300 and land it and it's, it's on storage capacity 3.8 volts a cell. Um, but if I run the uh, 2200, uh, I usually spank it and uh, I get it about four and a half minutes and it comes back on storage. Um, so that's that. Uh, I hope you, uh, you have a look at the flight characteristics and uh, that you like what you see. And uh, if you do, at the end, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your help growing the channel. Uh, so that's that. Have a look. Enjoy.
Fish wants to land today.